Hi everyone, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to present our work, progressively optimized by granular document representation for scalable embedding based retrieval. I'm Shi Tao Xiao, a master student in Beijing University of Ports and Communications. And this work is done during my internship at Microsoft Research Asia. Ad hoc retrieval is important for today's online applications. In response to each input query, the system needs to select the appropriate document from the entire corpus. Nowadays, the embedding-based retrieval has become a promising solution. While deep learning-based document representation and approximate near-list neighbor search techniques ANN for search, are jointly used to handle this problem. Embedding-based retrieval consists of the following steps. In the offline stage, the text encoder is learned to represent the input document as embeddings, while queries and their answers can be projected close to each other in the latent space. Then, the AN index is built for the embedding of the entire corpus. In the online stage, the AN index is hosted in memory once a search request is present. The input query is encoded into its embedding, uh, with which irrelevant answers are efficiently selected by the searching the index. However, the solution is challenging when a messy a scale corpus is given, as the NN index can be too large to fit into memory. For example, 1 billion flow embeddings will take a 3 TB RAM space. Such a problem becomes even serving when today's online platform. In this week, in this work, we target this problem with the background newly documented representation, where documents are represented as two sets of embeddings. As shown in this figure, the lightweight sparse embeddings, which are indexed and stand by in memory for candidate search, the high-weight dense embeddings, which are maintained in disk for post-verification. For each query, the candidate docs are selected while in memory index search. Then, in the dense embeddings of the shortlist candidates are loaded from the disk, uh, with, with which the post-verification result is generated. With the above the treatment, the embedding-based retrieval becomes scalable. Uh, despite the satisfaction of memory space constraint, the learning of bigranular document representation remains a challenge problem. Since the usage of sparse embeddings and the dense embeddings are different, they also need a different ability, uh, particularly the sparse embeddings need to distinguish the right answer from the uh, irrelevant ones in the entire corpus, such that query and its related docs can be confined in the same latent area. We define the ability to find uh, query irrelevant answers from the entire corpus as global discrimination. The dense embedding needs to ident identify the ground truth from the shortlisted candidates generated by the sparse embeddings. We define the cap uh, ability of selecting the ground truth from the shortlisted candidates as the local discrimination. The existing algorithms uh, typically learn the dense embedding directly. When sparse embeddings are needed, they also uh, they usually unsupervised quantized from the well-learned dense embeddings. However, we argue that the conventional ways of generating the bigranular document representation is improperly optimized. Particularly, the conventional dense embedding are learned for the global discrimination. However, considering that the dense embedding are used for post-verification, it shouldn't be optimized on top of the answer distribution over the entire corpus. Besides, it's also uh, was in noting that the unsupervised compression is lossy, which prevents the full coverage of the relevant answer in candidate search. To address the above problem, we propose the progressively optimized the document representation instead of running unsupervised colonization for the well learned dense embeddings. The sparse embeddings are generated from constructive learning which optimizes the global discrimination and helps to enable high-quality answers to be covered in candidate search. More importantly, the sparse embeddings will formulate the candidate distribution on top of which 
So dense embedding can be optimized for the local discrimination. In this place, uh, a narrow sampling uh, strategy called locality-centric sampling is introduced to optimizing the local discrimination. In the following section, we will present the training method of sparse embeddings and dense embeddings with more details. Note that the memory efficient representation is only needed for the documents, which cause the uh, indexing and uh, in memory storage. Thus, we adapt the network with asymmetric distance computation. The dockers are contest for sparse in, uh, embeddings, while the queries immense dense embeddings. For the training uh, objective, Instead of running unsupervised quantization on the dense embedding, the sparse embeddings are learned for the search accuracy. We adapt the info NCE loss. For negative sampling, we use in batch negative methods, where the positive door cost in one training instance is used for the augmentation of, of uh, other instance negatives. Uh, besides, we further sampling one similar negative for each query based on BM25 score, which is proved to be helpful for document representation. We rely on the bot backbone to generate the dense embeddings. The dense embeddings are learned to identify the ground truth from the candidate generated by the sparse embeddings. Besides, we introduce a narrow sampling method locality-centric sampling. Firstly, the graph is constructed, uh, which organizes the queries and uh, their relevant uh, documents based on the, their sparse embedding similarity. Secondly, the random sampling is performed on a local patch of the graph, which generated the queries and their high negatives. We design two sample methods on the graph, random walk and uh, snowball which can be viewed as a variant on the depth first and the width first. Uh, by doing so, the negative sample of one query may also be shared as an other negative sample to another query. We conduct an experiment on three data sites. The MS Marco benchmark including two tasks, uh, the page retrieval and the document retrieval. Besides, we use an uh, industry data site on sponsor search, whose corpus contains 1 billion ads from the Bing search. As far as we know, uh, this is the largest corpus used in relevant studies, which help us better an analyze the performance in mass scale retrieval task. We make comparison with the latest document representation method which achieves strong performance on tasks like web search, uh, including DPR, DBIRT, ONS, and the STAR. We use two AN index in the experiment to evaluate the mass scale retrieval performance. The SOTA scalable AN algorithm disk AN is used. And to evaluate the generic retrieval performance, we adapt HNSW, which is one of the most effective AN algorithm in statistics. The evaluation of mass scale retrieval are shown in table one, in which the baseline document uh, representations are combined with the disk NN index. The dense embedding are compressed by PQ and uh, indexed by graph. Both baseline and our method uh, receive 100 dockers from the candidate search and then rank them. According to the experimental result, BIDR outperformed the baselines with notable advantages, especially on the largest data set, sponsored search. The record turn can be improved by 17%. In table two, the baseline index is switched to HNSW, a graph index which is more accurate than disk NN, but no longer memory efficient. Since the sponsor search uh, data set has a billion scale corpus, which is too large for HNSW to fit into memory, we only use web uh, search data set for the evaluation.
the experimental results are shown as table 2, which is SNSW. The baseline performance are improved compared with their results in table 1. At the same time, by DR, still maintains advantages over the old baselines. Such a finding indicates our uh, biogranularly embedding based uh, uh, embedding advantage against the conventional embedding based retrieval method, which rely on a unified set of dense embeddings. The global discrimination and the local discrimination are two different objectives. A too strong local discrimination is uh, unfavorable to the global discrimination. Therefore, instead of enforcing a unified set of embeddings, it's better to use two sides of embeddings which, uh, which work co uh, collaboratively to optimize each of the objectives. The evaluation of, of our contractual condensation is shown at the upper part of the table 3, with three baselines compared. The unsupervised method PQ and OPQ, uh, and uh, the ODPQ, where the reconstruction loss and the matching loss are jointly minimized. The required rates are reported for the candidate search result. We find that the direct use of PQ is lost. Other baselines are improved thanks to the effective reduction of the reconstruction loss. However, they still inferior to our construction condensation. The impact of locality-centric sampling method, random work, and snowball sampling are evaluated against the two baselines, AN negative sample used by us, and the second is AN add in batch sampling used by STAR. The evaluation result shows both random work and snowball outperform the baselines. Such a observation verifies that our method is beneficial to the learning of dense embeddings. The evaluation of efficiency is shown as the figures. In our experiments, the time latency and the recall rate are measured for different scale of candidates. One, on one hand, the expanded candidate side will contribute to the high recall rate as the ground truth answers are more likely to be included. On the one hand, the expanded candidates will increase the cost and the search and the post verification, will incur a high, high time uh, latency in our experiment. The candidate size is increasing for uh, 100 to uh, 10,000, which leads to the growth of the required rate as well as time latency. As we can see, the baseline is limited when the candidate size is small. The performance gap between BIDR and the disk still remains when huge amounts of candidates are included. Here are the evaluation of scalability. The scale of sparse man Sparse embedding is uh, gradually increased by expanding the code books. The data condensation will be less lossy when more bits are used. Thus, the required rate can be improved. Uh, for all data sites, the idea close to high required rate with less than uh, 300 bits memory cost, which means uh, 1 billion cobots can be hosted by uh, for high quality AN search. Such a finding reflects our ability of handling mass scale retrieval tasks. In conclusion, we propose that the progressively optimized by granular document representation for scalable embedding based retrieval. In this work, the contrastive uh, condensation was used to generate the sparse embeddings, which lead to a memory efficient candidate search. Based on the candidate distribution of the generated by the sparse embedding, the dense embeddings were learned with the locality centric sampling, which achieved the best post verification accuracy. Comprehensive evaluation was performed, whose result verifies the effectiveness, efficiency, and the scalability of our method. The code of the work has been open sourced in GitHub. That's all. Thank you.